Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center with the uh, daily update on Hurricane Ian for Friday, September 30th. Uh, the center of Ian is rapidly approaching the coast of, of South Carolina. Looks like it's going to make landfall in the next couple hours somewhere here between Charleston and the Myrtle Beach area. Uh, we're start starting to see the hurricane force winds wrap farther around the center based on what we're seeing in radar data and data from the Air Force hurricane hunters. So uh, conditions are going to deteriorate very rapidly here along much of the South Carolina coast. We have the onset of hurricane force winds expected imminently, uh, life-threatening storm surge developing, and you can see the expansive rain shield associated with Ian that extends all the way up into North Carolina. Um, if we look at the forecast now, we have that hurricane warning in effect for the entire South Carolina coast, as well as Brunswick County, North Carolina. We're going to see those hurricane force winds move on shore within the warning area here in the next few hours. We're expecting the center of Ian to move inland across eastern South Carolina tonight and into central North Carolina and western Virginia on Saturday. But even as the don't pay too much attention to the exact location of the center because Ian has a huge wind field associated with it. You can see tropical storm force winds extending well out into off the North Carolina coast. We have tropical storm warnings in effect for much of the North Carolina coastline. A hurricane watch in effect from uh, Cape Fear up to Surf City and that hurricane warning for South Carolina. We're also expecting an inland wind threat to develop that we'll talk about in a minute as well. But first I want to focus on the storm surge hazard. We have the potential for we're expecting to see up to four to seven feet of inundation above ground level. And this storm surge is going to be happening now in this area between the Isle of Palms and the North Carolina, South Carolina border. So places like Myrtle Beach, Georgetown, this is your time you're going to want to be make sure you're out of harm's way in terms of the threat of inundation from the Atlantic Ocean water pushing inland over dry land. We could also see significant storm surge all the way up the North Carolina coast to Duck, Albemarle, Pamlico Sounds, and south of Char including Charleston, Savannah, uh, down to Savannah, Georgia. Georgia. But the, the most imminent threat and life-threatening storm surge is going to occur in this area between the Isle of Palms and Little, Little River Inlet in the next few hours. And that's where we have that storm surge warning in effect uh, right now. So if we move on to the rainfall threat, as Ian moves inland, don't pay attention to the fact that the winds are going to decrease. The rainfall, uh, the amount of rainfall that, that comes with a tropical storm or hurricane has very little to do with how strong the storm is. It has to do mostly with the motion. And that all that tropical moisture from Ian is going to be lifted up over uh, a cooler air mass here over the Carolinas and Virginia and also interact with the topography of the central and southern Appalachian Mountains. We could see widespread rainfall totals here of four to six inches with isolated totals as high as eight inches across much, much of uh, North Carolina and southern Virginia. Could see some isolated totals as high as 12 inches in some spots uh, near the core of Ian. And that's going to lead to a widespread threat of rainfall flooding. The area in red here is where we're most concerned for the threat of rainfall flooding from today through tonight into early Saturday. And that includes places like Raleigh, Charlotte, Columbia, Roanoke, Norfolk, Virginia, all much of central and eastern North Carolina, eastern South Carolina, southern Virginia. And uh, remember, flash flooding kills a lot of people inland in tropical storm and hurricane events. Please don't drive into areas where water covers the road. Be especially careful at night when you can't see if there's flooded waters in your way. So this is going to be a time, a, not a, a day or, or night to, to go out venturing around if you don't have to. And especially if you live in a flood prone area along a creek or stream, uh, you know, know where you're going to go and what you're going to do if water starts to rise and a flood warning is issued for your area. And then the inland wind threat will extend all the way up into portions of central and eastern North Carolina, up to the midland section of South Carolina, especially in gusts. Uh, we'll probably see some uh, numerous wind gusts to tropical storm force that could result in tree damage, limbs down, power lines, some minor structural damage. So we could see power outages in this area. We're likely to see more widespread power outages in the area where, uh, where Ian comes ashore in South Carolina. And then we also have a threat for tornadoes. That, that tornado threat is going to be maximized today sort of to the right of where the center of Ian crosses the coast. That's going to include places like uh, Wilmington, Elizabeth City, Moorhead City, a lot of eastern North Carolina, and down to, uh, to the Myrtle Beach area in South Carolina is the most significant threat. Now I want to turn back to post-storm safety for those of you who might be watching in southwest Florida, areas that were devastated across the Florida Peninsula from, from Hurricane Ian. You know, we don't want to lose people in the post-storm environment. So it's very dangerous to go into heavily damaged places. You don't want to go into damaged buildings. You don't want to be in, in standing water. There can be power outages, live power lines. There can be chemicals in the water, other dangerous things that you, you don't want to be in an area that's been damaged heavily unless the authorities have told you it's safe to come back in. 
and not just for uh, what's happened in Florida, but also for what's gonna happen in South Carolina. For those of you who might lose power, and if you have a generator, please make sure you're using the generator properly. We have a lot of people die after events like this from carbon monoxide poisoning, from not properly ventilating your generator. Never run your generator in your home. Make sure you follow all the instructions, do that safely. Please don't become a statistic after the storm. So for those of you in the path of Ian today and tonight, please stay safe. Thank you for watching this update from the National Hurricane Center. I'm Mike Brennan.